Take a look at the list of the world's tallest timber buildings and you notice something interesting. In recent years, the titles moved about quite a bit, but only by the very smallest of margins. It's almost like we've hit a ceiling in how tall we can build with timber. These towers were all built in different countries with different building codes, so it's not regulations that are holding them back, there must be another challenge that they all have in common. Mass timber's far more sustainable to build with than concrete or steel, and using it for our buildings is a big part of us reducing our impact on the planet, so unlocking its full potential height-wise is pretty key. How do you go about building a skyscraper with timber? Why have we hit a ceiling in recent years? And just how tall could we conceivably go? The title of the world's tallest timber building never seems to stay in one place for long, at least in recent years. It began with Canada's Brock Commons in 2017 and was followed by Meostanet in Norway two years later. The current second tallest timber building, Hohoveen in Austria, was completed in 2020, coming in just one metre shorter. And in 2022, the title will head back to North America, but again only by the finest of margins. More on that in a minute. First of all, it's important to explain how we're able to build this tool with timber in the first place. We know those questions about strength, fire and wind resistance are already all jumping into your mind. One of the main reasons is the types of wood that are now used, harvested from sustainably managed forests. For example, cross-laminated timber, or CLT, and glue-laminated timber, or glue-lam, can be engineered to be stronger than steel, pound for pound, and more versatile than regular wood. CLT can be used for everything, from walls and beams to the entire core of a building, and it's a prominent feature in all of these projects. This category of building is called mass timber construction. But choice of material isn't the only factor. There are regulations like the International Building Code in the US which lays out standards that buildings and structures must adhere to, although local variations do apply. Changes in the latest version allow for mass timber buildings up to 18 storeys in the US, as long as the timber is fully protected by non-combustible materials. Rising to over 86 metres and set to beat the record by another mere fraction is Ascent in Milwaukee. It'll house over 250 apartments, with most of the structure made from glue lamb beams and columns, as well as CLT for the floors. Below this sits five concrete parking levels. Our Ascent project is really 19 stories of mass timber um, in a hybrid form with concrete uh, reinforced concrete cores. The building in itself we developed back in 2018. It's taken quite a few years to get to the point that we are right now where we're under construction, but really it's a really innovative project for us here in North America. But hang on, didn't we just say the limit was 18 stories? Well, yes, but exceptions can be made if you ask nicely, and if you're able to prove your building will be safe enough to go that little bit higher. That's how the team from engineering firm Thornton Tomasetti helped secure variances to the local building code in Wisconsin. For Ascent, we actually proposed a more uh, performance-based approach, almost like you would do with seismic systems in LA or San Francisco. And we basically show with engineering principles, testing, and other methods to demonstrate that the building meets the intent of the code and exceeds the performance requirements that are outlined in the code as a minimum. But the way they do things in the US is not the same as everywhere else. Building codes vary around the world and can include completely different rules. Since 1994, timber buildings in Sweden have not been limited by height or number of stories. Instead, the decision to approve a building or not is based on other factors like fire resistance, structural safety and quality of acoustics, and meeting those requirements is not easy. One project that has hit the criteria and that completed in September 2021 is the 75 meter Sara Cultural Center designed by White Architecture. This structure rises to 20 stories entirely of timber. Sara Culture Center uh, is going to be a new landmark for the city of Skellefteå. This is the largest public building with the construction uh, of load bearing structural components, which is made of CLT and, and glue lamp. Cross laminated timber was also used for the elevator cores and to make the hotel rooms that are formed with individual modular units 
stacked on top of each other. The challenges was to make the tower stable. So for that, we used actually two cores in each end of the high rise. And then we had these pre-manufactured hotel volumes. So we used those to stabilize the stack of, of rooms. It's not all about stability, of course. Buildings like this also have to prove they can withstand fire for long periods with the wood charring instead of burning quickly, which is exactly what mass timber products are engineered to do. In the case of Sara, that's 90 minutes in the high-rise part and 60 minutes in the lower-rise section. The wood used over on ascent, which is protected by 4-inch sacrificial layers, has to go through an even stricter procedure. And so for the fire ratings for vertical components of these buildings, in using the high-rise code provisions under 400 feet, we know that we have to achieve a three-hour rating for the, the columns. So particularly on ascent with mass timber columns or glue lamp columns, we knew that that char duration we needed to actually quantify through physical testing. But what about high winds? Lateral and gravity load-resisting systems made from timber are lighter and less stiff than on conventional buildings. Timber being a lightweight material, so we have to think of uh, how to handle with stiff joints to, to mount them together. For example, in Sarak, we had to concrete in the very highest floors just to make it not sway too much, so to prevent seasickness. If you want to build taller, you can use other methods. For those worried about earthquakes, seismic testing is often a key part of the design development phase. And because of the strength, stiffness, flexibility and low weight of mass timber, it can often be a better choice than traditional alternatives. It's possible to go further too, like on the new head office for Vancouver-based structural engineering firm Fast and Epp, which is fitted with special devices that act like shock absorbers at the base of the CLT walls. So why can we only build this tall with timber right now? And how come the top three are all so close in height? The experts we asked all found it difficult to say for sure, and what becomes clear is that it's probably a combination of factors. There are limitations to the materials in terms of performance and strength. Procuring this much timber for one scheme is not easy. There's the issue of cost and, of course, those regulations. Regardless of the different markets they're in, these projects will have all faced these challenges in a comparable way, which could explain the similar results. And then there's the really big question. Will we ever see true timber skyscrapers, technically defined as a building that's taller than 150 metres? I think it's only a matter of time. If you just look at the, uh, the explosion of like, high rises in the, the early 1900s, from being the, the first one it was 16 storeys, and then Empire State Buildings, I think it was 30, 30 years apart. So if we say 30 years, we will have a uh, wooden skyscraper in Japan, preferably. <laughs> well, if this next concept makes it to completion, then Robert could be proved right, and in 20 years, not 30. In 2018, Japanese firm Sumitomo Forestry proposed a 70-storey wooden tower for Tokyo, which would rise to a whopping 350 metres. Made from 90% timber, the plan is for it to have columns and beams made from steel and wood, with steel diagonal braces providing additional support against those lateral forces. It was also given a 2041 completion date, which probably goes to show how much time and effort would be needed to make something like this actually happen. It'll take money too. The price tag was estimated at 4.2 billion US dollars, around double that of a similar conventional building. John Peronto agrees that mixing wood with other materials like steel is probably our best option if we're going to go much higher than a cent. I think the practicalities of procuring that much wood, um, the practicalities of how large column sizes uh, may actually get out of wood. I think if it does happen, you'll see it more in a hybrid setting um, where you start incorporating uh, other materials into the vertical load carrying capacity, like in the columns. I think you're going to see a little bit more of that um, in the taller push uh, when you start considering the use of mass timber. The Tokyo project might seem ambitious at first, but we can now build twice as tall with timber than we could just five years ago. And some of the more practical proposals from places like Australia represent another step forward. Will a proper timber skyscraper ever happen? Well, at the rate we're going, we wouldn't rule anything out just yet. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you're subscribed to Tomorrow's Build.